Today I found out a job a tier below mine has a much higher salary than my position and leadership was not planning on increasing mine, even though I do way harder work. I'm now looking outside the company for a step of my career, but I've already feeling actually qualified. Yeah, the smartest thing to do is say, okay, and smile and look for a different job. The best way to get offered a, a raise if you want to stay is to get an outside offer from a different company. That's why most people change jobs every few years. Also, another thing is you can always be interviewing. If you're at a job and you kind of like it, that doesn't mean you can interview and then say no. It's actually great practice. And also, here's the other thing. <laughs> if you apply for a job while you have a job, it makes you seem better in the interview. First of all, you don't act so desperate because you don't need the job right then. Yeah, as long as your current employer doesn't find out that you're interviewing, there's really no downside. Because then you get a better idea of what other offers you have. You have a little bit of uh, talking power when you're talking to your own boss. And here's how you say it. Just be polite. Let's say you're, you're, you're working somewhere and you're getting paid 45 and you get an offer somewhere else for 60. This is hypothetical, okay? You can go back to your current manager or boss and be like, hey, look, um, I love this job. I like working here. I think I've been doing a great job. I want to grow here. I want to do better. Um, I received this offer for a little bit more than I'm making. Is there a way you can help get me closer to a little uh, more equitable salary here? Because, you know, I, you know, I got to think about my my future and my, my, my career growth, but I'd love to do it here. And that's it. It's a very polite thing to say. It's a very polite thing to say, and they'll totally understand, and no one's freaking out. You should get comfortable being able to negotiate for yourself because it helps you a lot. And I was really bad at it. So I'm telling you this as somebody who was really, really, really bad at it. Do you think that it's possible to get too many promotions too fast and end up over your head? Absolutely. I've seen it happen to people. End of the day, most jobs, you figure them out by doing them. And so getting a little over your head early on in your career is not a bad thing because you'll suck at it at first and then learn it and then be ahead of the game. Just got a new job. What suggestions do you have to impress my bosses? All right, watch Marketing Mondays, print them out, study them verbatim, and then repeat them at the water cooler like they were your ideas. I already do that, LMAO. Wow. <laughs> wow, wait, a lot of you said that. A lot of you just said I already do this, which is, <laughs> you know, I need to start taking a cut of your salary last week i completely blanked during an interview and i saw my interviewer cringe over video <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> it's really funny hey it can only go up from there brother listen you've done it you've literally made the interviewer cringe and you're fine okay life moves on that's funny i, I sorry i have to laugh because that <laughs> i can imagine just pure deer in the headlights blanking. <laughs> Here's what I would honestly recommend. Okay. Most questions in an interview revolve around like, tell me about a time you had to do X. Tell me about a time you had to take responsibility or tell me about a time you had to do this or tell me about one time you failed. Tell me Have just a couple stories ready of things you've done. Just like, and then no matter what the question is, like a politician, just try to get it back to that story where you did something cool. <laughs> I don't know. Like if I want to talk about the green out, because I love talking about the green out, <laughs> then <laughs> if they asked me my biggest failure, I'd be like, oh, well, my biggest failure, I'd have to say, was that I didn't anticipate how big of a success the green out would be. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. And then I, <laughs> at the end of the day, you only have a limited amount of time in the interview and you want to make sure they hear your fucking important stuff. Because here's another truth that you don't realize yet. Most people are also bad interviewers. This is what you don't realize. When you're sitting in the chair and you're scared of that other guy asking you the questions, that person is scared to be the interviewer. Most interviewers don't know what the fuck to ask. They're doing the basic default questions because they don't know. That is the honest truth. They don't know what to ask, so they're asking the generic shit. And so just realize they are, they are uncomfortable with this too. Try to make it easy on them. Just answer every question, no you. <laughs> How does that work? What's your biggest weakness? No you. Actually kind of chat it up. 
You're hired. <laughs> You're a good streamer and have the best takes. Ty Lopez level knowledge. <laughs> thank you for the first half. Thank you for the first half of your statement. No, thank you for calling me Ty Lopez level. Do not say what this chatter suggested. Enough about me. Why should I work for you? <laughs> yeah, wait. Show up with sunglasses on. During the middle of the very first question, say, okay, enough about me. And then put your feet up on their desk. Why should I work for you? <laughs> that's good. That's a fun. That's good. That's really good. I roughly used your your five years answer and it seemed pretty good. It's a goaded answer. If you guys don't know, whenever they ever ask you, where do you see yourself in five years? I always answer, um, listen, listen, the job I have now didn't exist five years ago. Okay. The industries we're in are changing so fast. All I want to be is at the top of my field. I don't know where things are going to be in five years, but I want to be good at it. Something like that. That's where I go. What if it did exist five years ago? <laughs> yeah, this is like, yeah. This is, this is you applying for a Pizza Hut job. <laughs> yes, it did exist five years ago. <laughs> it's existed for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, you're like a taxi driver. <laughs> Listen, taxi drivers didn't exist five years ago. Okay? Who knows? <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> what about tell me about yourself? Okay, tell me about yourself is um, if you have any common interests with the interviewer, that you somehow know about, that's a good time to bring it up just to make a bond real quick. You know, it's mostly like an icebreaker. Tell me about yourself. Just don't be too long. Just don't ramble. Feel free to stop, okay? I One thing that's really good in an interview is if they're being quiet, finish your answer and be quiet too. It's so fine. There will be a moment of silence and then they'll ask another question. Half that shit is feeling, dude. I swear to God, interviewing science is bullshit. The more I've learned about interviewing, the more that you realize that anyone who thinks they can figure it out in an hour off their gut feel is wrong. Dead wrong. Background references and reference checks are the way better way of figuring out if someone's actually who they say they are. People are, some people are great in interviews and absolute dog shit workers. I came to my first interview 15 minutes late and got kicked out immediately. Yeah. You do not want to be late. You always want to be early actually to an interview. Do whatever you can to not be late to an interview. I, I, just because it's a, it's a bad look. And even though it's really not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things, people are often have real reasons to be late to things. Uh, interviewers like to feel haughty about it. <laughs> oh, you're late to this interview? Mm -mm. I get there the day before and camp outside the building. <laughs> Someone shows up to work to interview you that day. You're on the front lawn in a tent, pissing into a jar. I'll be ready in eight hours. Just here. Good to see you, sir. That's dedication. That's dedication hired on the spot. I quit my last five jobs after a few days. Do I still use them as references? No. What are they going to say about you? He quits after a few days? <laughs> he was amazing. The three days he showed up was like a guiding light for the entire organization. <laughs> His first day, we almost made him CEO. No, I wouldn't include, I wish you wouldn't even put them on your resume. What should you do if you don't get ignored for, or if you get ignored for job stuff? I've had two people tell me they want to talk to you about being an editor, but when I reach out to them, they didn't respond. And it's discouraging to seem so interested in me and then drop it. Well, if you're trying to be an editor for streamer, you should know that all streamers are either incredibly lazy. No, they're incredibly lazy and distracted. <laughs> so they're very bad about getting back to you and making plans and follow up and getting you money. All right. That's just, the, that's a fact of it. What you should probably do, uh, if, and this is only if like you're, you know, you're in this stage where you're like, I got to hustle. I got to figure something out. Then what I would recommend is picking a streamer you want to edit for and literally making the video. I, I know I, I hate saying free work. And in fact, don't let them upload it for free, <laughs> but show them. You should literally come to them with a complete video and be like, yo, this is done. You could upload that tonight. Um, this is my fee. Yeah, also make sure you're not getting scammed. Somebody just talked about $10. I had a streamer who was paying me $10 for a three, four hour edit video and got pissed when I asked for more. 
Bro, you're making double quack and you're asking for more? <laughs> you greedy son of a bitch. <laughs> quack, do not get any ideas, brother. Do not get any ideas. It's unsustainable. $10? I'll, it'll bankrupt me. I don't believe in the idea of making one resume that has absolutely everything on it and just mass sending it out. Because that makes it... That's offloading the work to the other person. To like sift through it and find the story of you for this job. Just make it easy for him. It's funny how Stan's nature of opposing Stan's free labor. I don't believe in free labor. I'm just saying it, it, at the start, it can work. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to give you the honest strategies. I did free labor. So how can I say never do it when I did it and it helped? Um, it's not a long-term solution and it, you should always walk away if you feel like you're getting exploited. The problem is the uh, the person in this case, like a streamer looking for an editor, has a lot of choices and not a lot of time or energy to sift through them. So you have to make it easy for them. And by doing the job first, it just makes it easy. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, like like that. I, I remember I, I showed you guys the Sprite commercial guy. No, I really wanna work for you. Like I mean, really, really though. So can I write? Can I write for Sprite? Can I write? Can I write for Sprite? Anyway, it's insane amount of effort. He got the job. He's like lead copywriter for the Sprite account at a big ad agency. Off of that, at the end of the day, the system's kind of so. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not supporting the system that I think <laughs> exploits the average worker. <laughs> I am just saying I don't think we're gonna change the system here on my Twitch chat. So I might as well give you honest advice on ways that I've seen where people have used it to to help themselves out. Oh, this is the last question I'll answer because it's important. Why do all entry-level jobs say minimum three years experience required? That is literally to reduce the number of applicants they get. That's it. Any job you see where it says you need this much experience, ignore it. I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. They only put that shit on there to reduce the number of applicants. Nobody, when they fucking write a job application, ends up getting what they wrote for exactly. Now, look. If it's like we're hiring a senior VP of sales, you need sales experience. And you're like, well, I've not done anything. <laughs> They're not going to hire you. But generally, like if it says five years and you have two, that's fine. If it says three and you've got zero, that's fine. I'm not kidding. Anyone who sees that and it's like, oh, I don't have it. I'm not going to apply. Probably wouldn't have gotten the job anyway. So it saves them time. What do you say if they bring it up in the interview? Well, have an answer ready. But say like, let's say, for example, you have one year and they ask for three. You can say, well, it was an extremely formative year. I learned a ton. I'm ready to grow. I think this job opportunity is the right opportunity for me. I think I can really thrive in this environment. Um, I love what your company's doing. And I I, uh, I think this is a challenge I'm ready to tackle. Boom. You've solved your two-year gap without waiting two years doing the same job. Or you could do a quack set and lie and say, I misspelled the date. <laughs> yeah. Show up looking like psychic and say, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually 40. I've been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> I, I misspelled. Can I just put a recording of you in an interview? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, you asked me what my biggest weakness is? I've got an answer for this. <laughs> Let me just get my phone out here. Uh, sorry, I got to go to HRX YouTube. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, no, that's the fart video. That's a good one, though. <laughs> you should check that out. <laughs> okay, here it is. This is my answer. <laughs> Hrock, your teeth would look nice on a necklace. All right, that's enough questions. That's enough questions from chat. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We're gonna move on to Resident Evil now. Resident Evil, Resident Evil. That's enough questions from chat.